What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Main Stand Podcast, Season 2, Episode 24. I'm here with Mitch Ketchin. I'm here with Josh Ricker, my two favorite what Liverpool fans. And yeah, we're going to we're gonna talk footy. We got a, a transfers episode for the most part. Only like one big game this weekend. We're going to do a quick little, little preview on. You guys are going to get mm-hmm. to hear me wallow in self-pity about how bad I think City are. Um... And yeah, uh, I mean, I think the the main topic of discussion, the thing on everybody's mind, um, Chelsea have spent a lot of money since lot. Uh, since American man Todd Bowley has come in and bought the club. So to kick off discussion about transfers, about the winter, I'm going to start with a statistic. Chelsea, this year, this whole year, summer and winter included, have sold or have had 22 departures, netting them 67.83 million euros. They've had 23 arrivals since Bowley's introduction, and they have spent 611.49 million euros in roughly six months of ownership under Bowley. Josh, how much have Liverpool spent in seven years under Klopp? Yeah, we were talking about this right before we started. 750 under Klopp in what's now seven seasons. And I'm not and I'm not gonna sit here and get on my soapbox about spending money. Because City have spent over a billion dollars under Guardiola. I'm not gonna sit here and say and, and and try to play the high road with the money thing. It's very hypocritical of me to do. But at least it took City seven years to spend a billion dollars. Really puts those memes from last year when Chelsea were down in the dumps. Uh, the memes about you're sick if you're enjoying this Chelsea downfall. Um, we had to enjoy it while it lasted because right now, I mean, they're just spending unprecedented amounts of money. Um, not just in football, but I think any sport. <laughs> I don't know if any amount of money has been uh, sunk in at this large of a level. And we saw it again with, uh, might as well get right into it, Enzo Fernandez, $130 million. Um, I think he's one of the most expensive signings ever. I think the most the, expensive signing in the Prem. Yep, just yeah, a uh, eclipsed Mr. Grealish as the most expensive signing. For a guy in who's Premier been in, in Europe for about six months. Yeah, he's got like a handful of good performances in a pretty solid World Cup. And... Uh, it earned him an 121 million euro move. Uh, we we were talking before the World Cup about who was going to be this World Cup's Hamas Rodriguez, and I think we found him. Yep. Probably. And, yeah. And I'm glad Liverpool dodged that bullet. If I I'm think being he's honest, I think he's a very good player, and I think he should do well for Chelsea. I am worried that. 121 million euro move at 22 years old with very very little top top experience aside from about half a season in the portuguese and playing at like the, the top top level in the portuguese league and then a good world cup um i think enzo's talented and i think his ceiling is very high i worry that the added pressure plus this entire ecosystem that is chelsea football club is going to make his development a little bad but we will, we'll see. He may be the missing piece for them right now. Um, Chelsea sit in 10th place. I think uh, I think he'll be at PSG or Real Madrid in the next three years. I could also see that. Yeah. yeah. One of those situations where, again, like you said, Pat, that Chelsea depth chart, especially in the midfield, is just so, so loaded. I think he'll be fine. I think he'll be a good player. Um, but I think he'll probably have like a kind of a – a really good journeyman career where he, he's going to spend a few years at Chelsea, spend a few years at PSG, spend a few years at Real Madrid, like one of those kind of deals. Um, yeah. I just don't see a way he like clearly breaks through in that team. Uh, and, and financially, anytime a guy signs a big deal like that, it never lasts that long. You know what I mean? It always is cut short by something. Mm. Um, and how quickly he kind of escalated from, you know, Benfica to Chelsea – um, makes me think that he has really high ambitions. And mm-hmm. as we know, most people who do grow up playing in, in South America, their dream is to play for Barcelona or Real Madrid. So I think that's something to monitor over the course of a seven-year contract. Yeah, uh, another another funky contract situation we're offering dudes 
exorbitant amounts or offering exorbitant amounts of money for a player and then giving them a long contract to stretch out that fee to get around financial fair play. Um, I mean, I guess you kind of have to tip your cap to Boley being like, yeah, he has found a way to spend all of this money and get around these rules that are in place. Um, but at the same time, it's like, why do we have it if these there are relatively easily exploitable loopholes yeah. like that? Um, Bully's so, so rich too, but this is kind of, I mean, is it not the predicament that Barcelona got themselves in, paying things out in installments and, and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can see it going south as well, especially if they don't get themselves out of this hole. Chelsea don't make the Champions League next year, at least. There's or, or Europe. Europe is bare yeah. minimum this year after all the money they've spent. They need top six. They if, they if they don't make top six, it's catastrophic, I think, for them just in terms of the amount of money they've spent. You can't you can't put that much money into a squad and then not even be playing in Europe. And, and if you don't make Europe and then you don't, if they don't win the, if they don't make Europe this year and they don't win the league next year, catastrophe, catastrophe. You can't spend that much money and win absolutely nothing. I think there's like diminishing returns with buying players too. Like after a while, I think the, I think City have a really, really nice balance with it, honestly. Liverpool's a little bit light. City's perfect. I think Chelsea's a little bit overboard in the terms of, like, you're leaving so many good players out of the squad week in, week out. I think that almost boils over into, like, too much frustration and, like, bad attitudes around the training ground because you're not playing or what have you. Um, mm-hmm. So I think that's another thing with the Chelsea signing all these guys. I just think, how do you build, like, a culture or dressing room that's, you know, supportive and excited to be there when you have two thirds of your squad not playing every week. Hmm. I do think uh city's depth is a little bit of a myth, but I get what you're saying. Yeah. It, more it, than, it's more than Liverpool. So, I mean, yeah. And it seems like just like an odd cast of characters to all be kind of coming together at a really odd time in the club's history, I guess. Um, Bully clearly putting his money where his mouth is, going out and buying whoever he wants and i think at at a point when you look at these transfers <laughs> kind of happening and and coming to fruition out of nothing it seems like you have to question if it's going to be a two-year project a three-year project or is it going to be this eight-year commitment if 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 they're actually planning for the future financially how does how does this play out for everybody else if you have a club spending a billion dollars in one january window bringing in 23 new players that's a whole new squad you're clearly not relying on your youth development what does it look like for the future Hmm. i do think this is in a way them looking at the future a lot of these guys being on six seven year deals um they can get hit with a transfer ban and not bat an eye at it because they've bought so many new guys i mean you look at all the people they brought in in the summer as well to uh fofana uh you know guys like that cooley bali is still at the club right i'm not fucking insane yeah yeah Yeah, Yeah. cooley bali they brought in a lot of players um you know ben chilwell will feel like a new signing once he comes back from injury or he's back from injury uh he might be he's one he feels like he's been coming back from injury for the past two years he was injured for an entire year. So players like that coming back and feeling like a new signing to Chelsea have yeah. a lot of players in that side. Yeah. And I think this is Boldy coming in and saying, I'm going to rebuild the team, you know, sacking Tuchel and then bringing in Potter. And then instead of binning Potter because they're in 10th place, investing 250 million into the squad in the winter and strengthening it. I'm not, I think knocking them for their ambition is wrong. I think, Bowley is showing that he really wants to be an owner that has a good team. And he's going to put, like you said, Mitch, put his money where his mouth is and really invest in this side and bring in a lot of talent, bring in a lot of young talent and like a, a decent mix of relatively experienced players and really put this team together. That's going to have a go with the Premier League in the next year or two. But it's, uh, it, it's just crazy to me that he, you can, the, there's just a lot of money in the game right now. And again, it, it feels a little hypocritical, the pot calling the kettle black coming from the city fan talking about teams spending money because city spend a lot of money too, but they do it a little differently, you know, 200 here, 200 there. And, and again, I'm throwing around these numbers like they're fucking nothing, but like mm. 
it's a, it's a lot of money, but but cities seem to do it in in rebuild periods in like one window they'll buy four or five guys and they won't make any winter signings and then they'll make one signing the next year and then they'll you know maybe one more the year after and then a refresh two can or I, three years later. Can I put it in perspe- perspective how much money this is? Yes. So <clears throat> Chelsea are responsible for 37% of the spend in this January window alone. Um, that's more than the Bundesliga, La Liga, Serie A, and Ligue 1 combined. Yeah, it's an um, it, it, it exuberant just this amount of money. When you have one club currently sitting in 10th place with a new owner splashing cash like he is spending nearly a billion dollars in less than a calendar year but about half a billion about half it's just half a billion no if 815 million euros is 1 billion american dollars he spent nearly a billion dollars in a calendar year okay i, I was talking euros that's my bad international currency get yes. into pounds next yeah so 815 million pounds were spent this January transfer window alone. Mm. 815 million. That's a billion US dollars. And, and Chelsea, Chelsea was responsible a third for 30 of that. Sev- more than a third of that. I'm they got, that, they got that Mal Gusto guy too. We didn't even mention him. He was another like 30, 40 million dollar signing. They a broad lot of a couple 30 million dollar signings, Mudrick, Enzo. Uh, yeah, it's 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 a lot of money, and there's, you know, it's it's part of the game, you know. At the end of the day, um, some of the ones when you look back at the past year, like uh, Sterling, Aubameyang, it's almost like if you gave Chat GBT like transfer buying, Kukurea. Du- yeah, transfer buying duties, and Chat GBT went and just like bought who it thought would be good. Uh, mm. that's basically what Bully did this summer. The, the winter ones have been really good, don't get me wrong, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how he kind of manages this project in the long term. Yeah, I, I guess I am interested too. I, I do think Chelsea have built a really strong squad with this, and I think they've signed a lot of good players in a lot of good areas of the pitch that the team maybe needed the help in. But, man, it's it's just like... I've never thought I would see a team outspend City like that, and yeah, they are just blowing it out of the water. Uh, we haven't it, even really got a summer of like Newcastle yet either. Like we thought Newcastle was going to be in their yeah. bag, and, and they very well might be. They might just be kind of waiting to see how much they can build organically first. But that's another Chelsea's one you're going to be down the road. I, I do predict a, a summer out of City for what it's worth. So I'm, I'm not. Let it be known on this episode, I'm not <laughs> criticizing Chelsea's spend. I just think there's a lot of money that got thrown around this winter, and much like people expect a lot out of City when they spend money, I am now expecting a lot out of this Chelsea team, especially in 2023-2024. I'll give them a marginal pass in 2022-2023. Yeah. You get you get this much wiggle room before the slander starts, Chelsea. This much. <laughs> Let's uh let's move on to other teams, boys. We have I I have a list of transfers here, and these can be really quick hitters. Uh, yeah. you know, just a couple words on your opinion about him. Anthony Gordon, that went official. We talked about that last week. He is a a Newcastle lad now. What do you like? Guys I say? said, do Newcastle know something we don't? Because he has looked bang average when I've seen him play for Everton. I mean, he's playing in an Everton side. Put him in a in a half decent Newcastle side. Maybe he'll learn a thing or two I saw uh, usually video. the good players stand out in bad teams <laughs> yeah. in my in my he's, opinion he's a solid bench option for him i think four of his five premier league goals have been deflections too yeah Inter- interesting revelation um kaylor navas to not not him for us this is That's another crazy <laughs> chat that is gbt crazy. transfer this, this is, this is not a transfer. even two this is a transfer you'd get if you're like if you're playing FIFA 14 and you quick sim uh, up to like 2023, 
and all the transfers are happening and they're just fucking weird. This is one of them where an old keeper who has been beaten out by by a young stud is getting sent to the prem for a low low club. I love it. Hmm. It's kind Another of funny too. That, uh... Henderson's their keeper, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a tough look for him, man. Another another one that I get to get to talk about on the list here. Uh Zhao Cancelo out of yes. fucking nowhere. Yeah. Going out on loan to Bayern Munich. I guess there was a really big falling out within the club uh with Pep. He he said on, you know, on social media that or ended his interview with Bayern that he just wanted a new challenge, but the rumor mill is he got in like a big training ground bust up with Guardiola after being benched for a couple games in a row. Uh, apparently Ruben Diaz and Phil Foden had to step in because Cancelo got physical, uh, threw a ball at Guardiola. Um, and then I guess after he was benched in the most recent game for Rico Lewis, uh, he was heard going down the tunnel, talking to his agent saying, get me the fuck out of here. Woof. Uh, told Guardiola straight up, play me or I'm leaving. And Guardiola said, here's the door. And uh, yeah, I guess Cancelo seeked out uh, the, the Bayern transfer, put it on the table and said, I will go to Bayern if you don't play me. And uh, the board and Guardiola said, you're allowed to leave. See you later, pal. We had yeah, an assist Lewis. in his first 17 <laughs> minutes too. Uh, yeah, but did you see the assist? That shit doesn't fly in the brim. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> it was it came out of nowhere. I know he's been kind of shit this season, but I mean, he was one of the best players in the prem last year. So just such a wild, uh, quick turn of events. I mean, and it's it, loan to buy, correct? Yeah, seventy million option. So uh, you know what, Cancelo, I hope you play well for them, and I hope they buy you, so we can spend <laughs> half that money on a decent fullback and then put the rest of it into a replacement for Bernardo, who I'm actually going to be sad about <laughs> leaving this winter or this summer. Fair. Another loan to buy, a uh, cross league transfer. Our boy Weston McKenney is in Yorkshire. Huge. Yes. Yeah, dude, Leeds are America's team. I the the pictures of Tyler Adams and Weston McKinney at the jersey signing, having Tyler Adams do Weston McKinney's interview mm-hmm. with Leeds. Dude, I I am a low key Leeds fan now. I'm a closet Leeds fan. I fucking love them. It's gonna be tough not to root for them in future games really well. I mean it's I gonna mean, be so if, cool. Every time they're not playing City, I'm rooting for Leeds. I just loved how happy he looks to be there. Oh, yeah. You can tell he's, like, boys with Tyler, too. I don't know about, like, Brendan, but I think him and Tyler Adams are actually, like, seem like pretty good friends. Yeah, they've been they've been friends since yeah. they were, like, 14, 15, I think. Yeah. They grew mm-hmm. up grew up together. Another one, another crazy – or not crazy, I guess, but Jorginho to Arsenal. Yeah. He adds to a list of weirdos who want to play for <laughs> both of those clubs – Absolute weirdos. I mean, David Luiz, uh, Petr Cech, Willian. I could go on, but, I mean, if you play for Arsenal and Chelsea, automatic check next to your name as being an absolute idiot. It's all Chelsea to Arsenal, too. Yeah. You, like, don't see Arsenal to Chelsea. Chelsea. Yeah. It, no, you know what it is? It's people who want to stay in London but have no ambition for their careers that's the only people who ever make this move arsenal being top of the league does not change that for me Jorginho just wants to stay in england have a nice posh apartment in in london and win a premier league title this year <laughs> yeah i don't care yeah it's, it's it, i do think it is a good signing and if we're talking strictly on the pitch it's an area that they've definitely needed a little bit of support in uh there are Thomas Partey or Grant Jacques a long-term, long-term injury at the end of the season and not really having much depth. Um, El Nenny being injured as well. They are a little bit center mid light. So he does, he does come and add some depth there. I don't think he starts. I don't think you look at Jorginho and say he's going to add more to a midfield than Odegaard, Jaka or Thomas Partey right now. But I do think he's really good depth for them. Honestly, uh, for though, what it's worth. Honestly, though, if you, uh, if you think about it, he wins the title this year with Arsenal. Uh, could be on the Ballon d'Or shortlist. Who knows? It's pretty yeah, much dude. how it works. Essentially, yeah. He wins a title with Arsenal and gets one assist, and, and bam. You know, it's it's basically what his fucking Euros one was. They get him on the world on the on the Ballon d'Or podium, but it's not this or that. Final um, one I had on my transfer list. Uh, I don't know if you guys had any extras. Uh, another center mid, uh, Marcel Savitzer to Man United. That one was an interesting one with, uh, I think, Erickson's out for them for a while. Yep. So uh, he yeah. comes over from Bayern. I think that's a loan to buy as well. 
I rate that transfer. I think Sabitzer's really, really fucking good, and I think he's going to fit in really well in the Ten Hag system. Um, yeah, I think that's a really, really good buy for them. What our city friend said. Yeah, I think it's pretty decent as well. That's all mm-hmm. I had for transfers. Uh, in terms of, like, managers, uh, obviously we had some movement in, in that way as well. We didn't get to talk about it last week, but Sean Deitch to Everton uh, finalized. He's now at Finch Farm managing the Toffees. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe you'll keep him up. Sean Dyche, our Lord and Savior. Are you happy? Army. Are you happy Dyche is back in the Prem Pat? No, I fucking hate Sean Dyche. <laughs> you hate him at I Burnley. Can... Do you hate him at Everton though? I hate him in the general. I can't stand his brand of football or his stupid fucking face. I don't like Sean Dyche. <laughs> He's good for the game, man. He's good for the game. You have to you have to have those teams that sit in and play like that. No, Honestly. you don't. You don't need to have a manager who encourages that. It's bad for the game. It's I, shit to watch. I love the uh, the Photoshop Sean Dyche had on Stone Cold Steve Austin on the turnbuckles, yeah. hammering the beers together like he's back. Oh, my goodness. I think it's it's great for the Toffees. I think it's going to be great for the league. Uh, it's going to be must-see football. And... Um, who knows? Maybe maybe they'll stay up again. Can't fucking stand either of you. <laughs> I know uh I know Pat wants to talk about Tottenham City here in a bit. It's gonna be a shorter episode, so we have some kind of quicker topics to just whip through, like the transfers. Um uh, first thing I want to talk about with you guys is Wrexham's game this weekend against Sheffield United. I know I, I sat down and watched it. Um an exhilarating three three game. The the team is really starting to kind of get some momentum over here in these in the States gonna keep it a grip didn't watch that game i completely forgot about the fa cup after city played on friday i'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest i i don't blame you but thoughts on Wrexham? uh do you think what, what do you think about people being fans of them i guess because there's a lot of talk on the internet about you know people will go support Wrexham but won't support their local team here in the states and, and stuff like that i think it's whatever helps grow the game in the states if it took uh, I'm fucking blanking on his name. Charlie and Deadpool to own. If it takes, it's always definitely, sunny in Philadelphia. Definitely and not Charlie, but good. I, we, we Whatever. Mac. Sorry. Mac. If it takes Mac and Deadpool to fucking make you a soccer fan, <laughs> it make, that's fine with me. Wrexham is your gateway drug to forward Madison. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It, yeah. if, if that's what it takes to get someone in the States interested in the game, then that's I think that's fine. Like, I get it. But there's just something about supporting them. And then, you know, and then you're like, oh, you know, I do like this sport. What's my local team? Oh, I live in Cincinnati, FC Cincinnati. Oh, I can go to games now. And, and then they become a fan that way. I don't think it helps any anybody to – like that wants to grow the game to like alienate people based on how they became fans of the game what is someone being a fan of the game through Wrexham how is that any different than me and Mitchell's first exposure to the game being playing FIFA with our friends yeah and then that's how we became fans and I'm seeing a lot I'm seeing a lot of growth out of Pat here because they were gatekeeping it for me because I didn't play soccer (laughs) I was not on that. I was not on that train. Thank you very much. I was but, not. I but, was not a gatekeeper. I don't gatekeep. I don't gaslight, and I don't girl boss. I wanted you to be a fan. So, but that's a good point. I I don't think people need to be gatekeepers of how how somebody is getting involved in the sport. Yeah. If 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 because because Rob McElhenney wasn't a fan of soccer. He wasn't the 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 he was a football fan. He was an Eagles fan first. He's an actor and he, he got involved in it and, and wanted to make a difference. And he wanted to expose people to the game. Um, and he wanted to help a small community that, that really needed it. So all this exposure that's Re- that Wrexham's getting, yeah, it's not your local team, but because it's so hard to access our teams across the pond, as Liverpool fans, it's it's more difficult to digest. We have to figure out how to digest that a- another way. So just like Pat said, you know, it gives people an opportunity to introduce themselves to it to the game, 
um, maybe not in the the purest of forms to to most soccer fans, but it it gets people in the door, gives you gives you a little palate, pure schmore. However you want to enjoy this lovely game, you should just do it. Yeah, yeah, I, I like them. They're kind of a Liverpool um, symmetric club, if you will. They're not that far from Liverpool, and Paul Mullen's pretty awesome up top. Um, they get through on the replay. I'm assuming that's next week. They play Tottenham too, so that would be a pretty wild, probably I would fucking love. Line. No, I would love Wrexham to fucking upset Tottenham. The magic of the cup, baby. Holy shit, that would be sick. I mean, shit. Rushy played like 24 matches for him. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, well, they were big back in the day, I think. Uh, and before they, they, they had TikTok on the shirts. Yeah. Um, I think last topic for me, Florian Balogun scored a hat trick for Reims. Uh, now he's the, the lead scorer in Ligue 1, future uh, U.S. talisman, I think. Imagine a front three of Pulisic, Balogun, and Reyna in 2026. Yeah, I think that's what people are talking about. I mean, he, like, very, um, have not heard his name. I saw him, he scored against PSG the other day when yeah. uh, Reams drew with PSG and then the hat trick, and now all of a sudden he's, like, league Goon top scorer, and it's kind of like, where did that come from? But uh, you have to look at his name for the future. We take oh, those. yeah, for sure. I had never heard of this kid, admittedly, before he started scoring all these goals, but... I fucking rock with it. American excellence, baby. Let's get it. We're taking over the world. World Cup 2026 champions. He'll be going back to Arsenal in the summer, so it'll be interesting. Um, yeah, especially with Jesus there, too. I wonder yeah. if he could get get any minutes for them. or And Nketiah, too, with how well Nketiah's Nketiah developed. is coming out. And Justin's been on him for a while. He's kind of like that that Jack Grealish when we were, we were like first introduced to him back in the day. Justin's been on the Enketia wave. I uh before Pat gets into Tottenham Man City, I do have one thing to show to the group. Um we we've talked about it in the group chat. I haven't actually got to show it off on camera, so I'm gonna try to do that. Um something everyone should do when their team sucks and is not playing well. You have to find ways to cope with it. Mm. So now my new toy that I will be bringing to most, if not all, Liverpool games. I'm gonna try to do this so I don't spill sand. Miniature Zen Garden. Everyone should get one of these so they can play with sand while their team loses. Liverpool is a clusterfuck, dude. Yeah, it's bad, and that's why we're not talking about them this week. Can I can I say one thing, though? Go for it. Maybe instead of um, buying back Melwood, because allegedly that's a thing, another reason we're a clusterfuck club, uh, they should just turn it into a giant Zen Garden. Yeah, just big rakes. Yep. Big, giant, massive rakes, and and just go play with the sand. Some cherry blossom trees, a bigger statue mm-hmm. of Buddha. There's a lot mm-hmm. of different things you could do there. With Yeah, exactly. With Jamie Carragher's face. Uh, Pat has more happy things to talk about, so I'm just going to pass the baton to him so he can talk about <laughs> Tottenham versus Man City. Yeah, it's uh, more or less the only exciting feeling fixture this weekend. Let me double check the Premier League app here live on air so I don't make sure we're not Forest uh, Forest Leeds is a fun one at the bottom, but Ooh, there's nothing will, else big. I will be watching that one. Um, yeah, that's that's about it. And then the Wednesday game is Leeds United. That'll be that'll be fun. I think. Ooh, yeah. I'm, I'm rooting for Leeds, even though they're at Old Trafford. But that's not the point. We're here to talk about Man City and Tottenham. Um, so I was confident going into the game at the Etienne, mm-hmm. and we won. I was confident going into the FA Cup tie against Arsenal. They're going to beat the shit out of us with their first team. But we won that game. Nathan Ake scored. It was pretty cool. I'm less confident going to White Hart Lane. Sorry, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. My bad. Um, But, but, big but. Tottenham or shit. <laughs> so I'm going to continue riding with my guys. I think City win this game and keep the pressure on Arsenal. Why? I'm not sure. 
because we just lost Shao Cancelo. We have three fullbacks. And the last time we played Tottenham, they scored two goals on us in four minutes and then capitulated. But will they capitulate again? Who knows? It's Tottenham. Um, yeah, the, usually a rocking atmosphere in the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium every time we go there, too. So that's going to be kind of against us. Uh, I anticipate Rico Lewis to start this game. Um, I think if Ruben Diaz is back and healthy, it'll be Diaz Laporte back line. Stones came off injured in the game against Arsenal, which makes me very sad. Um, maybe City play three five two. Yeah, I think. I think it feels like it might be time for City to break out the three five two again. Um, yeah, uh, predicted eleven. Ederson in net probably. I don't even know anymore with Guardiola. Maybe maybe left back instead because we don't have one. Um, no, nah, but it, it'll be Ederson, Nathan Ake, Stones, DS if he's healthy, Rico Lewis, uh, Gundogan, Rodri, Kevin De Bruyne, and then Alvarez, Holland, Mares. That'll be the team. Maybe drop Gundogan yeah. for Grealish, and it'll be a three-five-two. But. No, Grealish will start. Grealish has been actually in pretty good form for City. So it'll be Grealish over over Gundogan, I think. I like you over Tottenham. Uh, Tot- like you said, I think Tottenham's goals were kind of lucky to come that close together. Uh, you In the second half, you kind of showed why you're Man City. So. Yeah, but I don't know. It's the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. It's our, it's our bogey ground as of That's late. True. That's I'm true. A, I'm a little worried Draft about, game. about that. Are you? Do you regret selling Zinchenko in the summer? Oh my fucking god! Yeah, I want him back more than ever. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I, I was like, fucking. You mentioned not I, having a left back, so I had to bring it up. I was upset when he left. I fucking love Zinchenko. He's one of my favorite players. Like that has worn a city shirt. He would have died for us, and then we just sold him. See, ya. it was pretty cute to watch the Man City players like big brother him in the the game the other day. We they after, love him. Yeah, after I, the game, I, they're just like messing I with think, him. I think I know he loves us too. I know Zinchenko loves us in his heart of hearts. So I'm happy to see him doing really well at Arsenal. Though he's been a key player for them, and if they win the title, the only thing that will bring me joy is seeing Zinchenko win another Premier League title. It would be three in a row for him. He yeah. would three P, which I would be fine with. But I think that like wraps to... it up for us today, boys. Um pretty light again before champions league kind of gets off and rolling we have a lot more stuff to talk about so that's episode 24 um thank you for listening like share subscribe to the thing deuces